Hey, what is going on everybody? Today we are gonna jump in and take a look at how to use the Unity 6 to control the Neural DSP plugins like the Morgan Amp Suites we have here pulled up on the screen. So we're going to use the Bluetooth feature. This is all wireless. As you can see, we do not have any USB cables plugged in, just our expression pedal, just our expression pedal here and the power cable here. So let's, first things first, let's show you how to connect that with the Mac. So we're going to come over here and open the Audio MIDI Setup app. So when you open that up, we need to come in here and go to the MIDI Studio and click this Open Bluetooth Configuration. And then you will see the Bluetooth Configuration window pop up. Here in just a second, the Unity 6 will be available as you can see right here, and then just simply hit Connect. That is all you have to do to connect it to the Mac. And so now let's go ahead and close this out so we can quit that app. And then let's take a look at how to use it with the Morgan Amp Suites. So down here inside the settings, you'll see the MIDI input devices and you wanna make sure that you check the Jet Unity 6 and it's connected via Bluetooth. So that is it. That is all the setup you need in order to control these plugins with the Unity 6, pretty straightforward. So let's show you some examples of what we can do here on the pedal. So in this particular bank, we have an expression pedal controlling our output. So this acts as a volume pedal. We have a switch to control boost. So you'll see on the screen that uh, the output will, we have a six dB boost plugged into there. So it jumps back and forth between four and six dB. We have a transpose feature, so you can see um, that we are now scrolling through transpose. I've set this up on the Unity 6 to do like a min max. So when we get to number two, it'll cycle down to the minimum number, which is negative two in this case. And then we can double tap and that'll go backwards through the list. So, um, and then we've also got the doubler here. We can control the doubler, turn that on and off. And as you notice, for anyone that is concerned or worried about latency using Bluetooth to control plugins, you can see that is virtually a non-issue whatsoever. Immediately as I touch the switch, you can see the screen update in real time. This is even the case when we're sending multiple messages out to control parameters within pedals. You can see that all messages are sent immediately in real time and there is no lag. So let's jump to another bank here and show you some other things that we can do. I've programmed the BPM knob just to jump to bank number two. So with a simple press, we're now in our presets bank and we can control presets. So we have an up and down button here. This simply lets you switch between presets, scrolling up and down. And then we've also programmed a long press scroll. So if you hold it down, it'll scroll through presets in case you need to quickly get to a preset within your plugin. Uh, but more realistically, a more realistic use case is that you'll probably want to use these switches to jump to specific presets. So what we've done here is we're actually toggling between two presets. So I have like a, a clean and a dirty preset here, and this is more of an ambient preset. So you can see we have like a dotted eighth preset. It immediately jumps to that and then cycles back to my ambient clean. This would be more like a dirty, so mid gain drive and then I, you know, I set it up for clean here, but this preset actually says angry, but you'll, you get the idea. You can jump back and forth between clean or dirty presets um, immediately. So let's have a look at how we can control pedals now. So, you know, the, the plugins have preamp pedals. So amp, amp pedals that are placed before the amp and like overdrives in this case, we have a tremolo and compression. And then there's pedals that are after the effects and these would be stereo pedals like a reverb or delay. So let's uh, press the BPM knob here and we'll jump over to our pedals preset and you can see what we're doing here. So in this case, uh, we have set up our expression pedal to do something different. So as before, when we were controlling the output as a volume pedal, now within this preset, we can use that expression pedal to control multiple parameters at one time. So as you see, we are controlling the mix, pre-delay and decay all simultaneously without lag. And then they all have their own min and max values. And so we'll show you how to set that up here in just a second. But let's also show you how to use pseudo presets for each pedal. So in this case, these three presets on the Unity 6 are all 
controlling the delay pedal we have here. And so if you look, we have, um, when you press each button, it's actually gonna fire multiple MIDI messages and can change several parameters in real time. So this would be our quarter note, it changes the mix, time, tape drive, uh, feedback. This would be an echo. As you can see, everything happens immediately. And then our dotted eighth. So let's dig in and talk about how to set up these messages within the neural plugin. And then I'll show you how to do some of the programming so we send those messages with the Unity 6. So this takes a little bit of learning curve to understand what these types are, but we'll go through quite a few of these here today. And I think this is the, be the majority of the types you would end up using um, in a live setting. So first of all, we have this type column. So this is the type of message that it, it is going to uh, send or, can, or receive and control the pedal. And then you have a parameter column. You'll notice some of these parameters are empty. And then this is the channel that it's going to receive it. And this is the note CC or PC that it is looking for. So whenever you send this CC number, it'll activate this particular message type. And then you'll see we have this value column and most of those are empty, but some of them are, well, I guess most of them have values in it, but we'll show you what that's used for. So for instance, this first message here is that first bank when I was showing you how to control the output volume with an expression pedal. This message type here, as you see, we have, the plugin can receive PC, note, or CC, and then each one of those groups has its own value here. So we have absolute, relative, toggle, um, decrease and increase, gate, value, preset. So we'll show you most of these um, and talk about most of these here today. So an absolute value is whatever value you send it. So if you're sending CC value six, it's going to assign whatever parameter you choose here to that value. So in this case, we're doing an absolute value because we're doing a range of CC messages, CC messages that we are sending with the expression pedal. So here we wanna control the output gain. And as you can see, this has every parameter uh, that you could ever think of. So basically any parameter here within the plugin is all controllable via MIDI. And in our case, we selected the output gain. We're sending a MIDI channel, sending to MIDI channel six, and this is a CC number one. So this will just get the absolute value and then it'll send that value control the output knob. Let's talk about presets. So we were scrolling presets earlier. This is a CC preset decrease and increase. So there's no parameter here because it, it knows that you're going to be increasing and decreasing the actual presets. So you just assign the channel it's going to receive it on and then the CC number. And then here in the value, you can choose between increase or decrease. So this value will decrease it, or sorry, this number, CC number two will decrease it, and CC number three will increase it. So that's a preset decrease and increase. We've already talked about CC absolute. Let's look at CC toggle. So you have the CC toggle message, and it's going to take whatever parameter you assign it to. So this is our doubler. So when we are turning on the doubler, it's going to toggle that feature on or off. So if we continually send CC message five, or if we send it once, it'll turn it on, and then the software is smart enough to know that it's on. So when you send that same number again, it turns it off. So it's, it basically toggles a parameter by sending a single message. So that covers almost all of the CC types, but we also have CC value here. So CC value is you can select a parameter and then it actually changes to, whatever, to whichever value you type in there. So in this case, it's changing the delay mix to 22, the delay feedback to 78. So this is, these, these are the messages we use to control our presets per se within a pedal. So these bottom four here is what controls the um, dotted eighth preset we have assigned within the Unity 6. So we change the delay sync note, and of course you can have that do half, triplets, quarter. We have set it up to dotted eighth. And then here it'll send 
when it receives number 21, it changes the mix value to 78%, and you can kind of see how all that works. Um, and then PC, it's the same thing as far as a CC value, but we're sending PC messages. And this is the group of messages that we're using for the transpose feature. So you can see that on the pedal, we're scrolling from PC zero, from PC zero all the way up to PC four. And these are the values that it changes the transpose parameter to whenever it receives that PC number. So let's just kind of jump here in on the pedal and show you how we program some of this. Let's take a look at these bottom four messages here. And that would be this dotted eighth preset. So when we jump into the Unity 6 and go into programming, we want to access the preset number four. And then you can see we have press action, which is a press. So as soon as you press the button, it immediately fires a CC message to channel six, and that number is 20. So you can see this is right here. So it's controlling that delay note sync. And now in order for this to register as sending the message, you need to make sure the value is above 64. So I just swipe all the way up to 127. Now we have multiple messages tied to the same switch. So as you can see here, we'll jump down to message two. Again, it's a press, a CC message to channel six, but the number is 21, which is the delay mix. And then message three, the number changes to 22, which is the delay feedback. And then message four changes to 23, which is that delay tape drive. So that's how you would set up and control uh, sending a preset per se for a pedal. Let's also take a look at how we would program the expression pedal to work. So in this case, we have these CC absolute values, kind of like we used here at the top to control the output. And now we want to control the decay, the mix, and the pre-delay. So we're sending CC number seven, eight, and nine to our, from our expression pedal. So when we go into programming here, we'll hit expression pedal two, and you'll see here that this is message one, sending a CC message to channel six, the number is seven, and then we have a min and a max percentage. So this is how we can set individual ranges for each knob or each parameter within the plugin. So CC number seven, you see here in the plugin, that's the reverb decay. And then we have eight messages to choose from for each expression pedal. So in this case, we're only using three messages, but each message has its own number and its own min and max values. And that's how we control each knob or parameter within the plugin separately. So this is message three, number nine. So here in the plugin, that's gonna be the pre-delay. So you can you see the pre-delay goes from zero is considered the max. So that's um, when the toe is down on the expression pedal, that's considered max. So this one's kind of, it would appear to be backwards, but as you see in the plugin, I'll show you what that looks like. With the heel down, the maximum is at 70, or the minimum is at 72%. And then with the toe down, max at zero, it basically turns the knob counterclockwise is what we're doing there. So that's how we'd set the expression pedal up. And then let's show you a couple things here. We have this reverb. Let's show you how we can do two different things within the Unity 6. This is a toggle message. And when you assign a toggle message, you can see the screen will toggle back and forth between the dashed lines and the solid line. This is, gives you a visual reference like this is off. So you see on the plugin that the reverb is off. And then when it's solid, it's on. So let me show you how we set that up, both within Neural DSP and also within the Unity 6. So it's this message right here, the reverb active, and we're sending an absolute value. So if you want the screen to toggle between dashed and solid, you need to go into programming. This is under switch two. Now inside here, we are sending, every time we press, we're sending a CC toggle message to channel six. So the number is 14, which we look at the plugin here, you can see channel six, number 14, and then the Unity 6 is toggling back and forth between these two values. So the on value is when the bar is solid and the off value is when the bar is dashed. And so you see we're sending 127 and zero. So by choosing CC absolute, we are able to turn this switch on and off 
And then we have the ability to have see our screen go from dashed to solid. Okay, so now let's talk about a different way to do the CC toggle. So if you don't want the screen to toggle between the dashed lines and the solid bar, then we have another option here, and that's with this doubler function we have programmed in here. So if we look at the neural DSP plugin and go to this doubler active, you'll see that now we're using the CC toggle type within the plugin, and we're just sending a single message uh, CC5. So if you go into the pedal here, go into programming and underneath switch one, you'll see that we're just sending a CC message with the same value. Instead of toggling back and forth between 127 and zero, now we're just sending that same number and value every time we press the switch. And so this is what it looks like within the plugin. You go here and now your bar does not go back and forth between the dotted lines but you are activating the doubler every time it gets pressed. So that's a different way of programming a CC toggle. You can do it on the pedal, which lets your scribble strip update on and off, or you can do it within the application, with the plugin application, and then your scribble strip can stay on uh, if that's how you would want to choose to do that. And, you know, it just depends on your circumstance and on what you're wanting to do or control at that time. All right, it's so the last thing I want to talk about is this transpose feature and how we're scrolling through presets. As you see here, we're scrolling up and then the double tap scrolls backwards through the list. I wanna show you how we are using the Unity 6 to make that happen. So if you go into programming, we're underneath switch three. And so we're actually using a scroll PC message type. And then you'll notice this is on the release because we have two messages here. This message one is on the release, and then message two is on uh, the double tap. And so the, if you've watched any of our other videos, you'll notice that the press always fires, no matter your, whether you're doing a long press, a double tap. Um, so it's important that if you wanna have multiple features on one switch or multiple press actions on one switch, then you want to program anything that you quote unquote press you assign that to a release. And so this triggers whenever it's released. So what we're doing is we're scrolling PC to channel six, and this has max PC number here. So you, it starts at zero and then goes up to four. Once you've reached that max number, the next time you hit the switch, it will go back to zero again. And so you can see that we have a counter, which is counter one, and that is the same counter underneath message two, counter one. And what that does is it keeps both of these press actions in sync. So the double tap, the direction goes down, but underneath message one, you can see we have the direction goes up. And so what we're doing is when it's released, it goes up and when you double tap, it goes down. And then like, just like we showed you here in the software, once you've released, or once you've gone to that minimum value, which in this case is zero, we're all here at negative two. The next time I do that, it goes to the max value, which we've assigned to um, PC number four, and that value is two steps up. So that covers pretty much all of the different message types and scenarios that you would run into when using the Unity 6 to program your, or to control your plugins. So I hope we've given you enough information and kind of inspired you to go ahead and get started on programming your Unity 6 to control your plugins. So if, if we left anything out or if you have any additional comments, don't hesitate to drop them down below in the comments and we will see you guys later on the next one. See ya.